one of the movements of Holy Mother Church thing that, during this period of time after the Easter celebrations and throughout Eastertide is to provide to us readings of the risen Lord appearing and meeting his disciples. This allows us to know definitively that Jesus Christ died on a cross to conquer sin and on the third day to rise from the dead to conquer death itself. But Holy Mother Church isn't trying to convince us of these things. I don't think she is. I think that through these readings of appearances of our risen Lord to the apostles, to the disciples, is to bolster and strengthen the faith of baptized believers, of baptized disciples, for ourselves, to strengthen ourselves, to root ourselves more deeply in the risen Lord, and for others, so that we open ourselves up for others, so that they can encounter him as well. Now, even for the best of us, who are believers, who are living and breathing in Holy Mother Church, in God himself, by the power of the Holy Spirit, there are going to be moments in our life where we lack understanding in the mysteries of the faith. And when that happens, we sometimes like to equate it with lack of faith. But I don't think that's the case. And the apostles provide to us this example of they did not understand the resurrection, but it didn't lead them to doubt. There was an intermediate step that was there. They were afraid. Their lack of understanding led to fear, then led to doubt, to which our Lord asked the question, Why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Like the disciples, the resurrection might be something hard to understand. Or let's put it in another situation, a difficult situation in my life arises, and I don't know how to understand it, given my faith, and so I'm going to move into fear, and then I'm going to fall into a lack of faith. And when this happens, return to this gospel, to be strengthened. Because Christ's resurrection wasn't just some symbolic reality that took place, that Christ is alive in my heart. Or that Christ uh, was given a new life. A resuscitation brought, was brought back to life. And he had the same reality that he had before. Like Jairus' son. Like Lazarus. Like the widow's son at Nain. Resuscitations. They are going to die again. But Jesus Christ in his risen body who died on a cross and then rose bodily from the empty tomb. That is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, really and truly. But there is something different. It's a transformed, a transfigured humanity. And St. Luke, as a physician, would kind of be like a, what we would think as the scientists of the day and age, provides to us that precision in the way he records this gospel account. The fear of arises in their heart. They thought they were seeing a ghost. So what is the move that the Lord does? But he speaks, and then he shows them his hands, and he shows them his holy wounds. He shows them that he's not just a ghost or a spirit, that he has flesh and blood, and that this is truly the one that was crucified. And as the disbelieving continues, with now a joy to it, he then asks for a piece of fish to be able to eat. Yet this is the same person who is able to move through locked doors, and he will vanish from their sight. The problem with this for us and why lack of understanding happens is because these are outside of our categories. 
our human reason and categories that we have doesn't fit. Because Jesus Christ, risen from the dead as a transformed, transfigured humanity. That goes beyond our human capacity to understand. The way St. Paul puts it is he has a spiritual body. That he is not bound or limited by space, time, and the laws of nature. With that, I had a conversation with an artist. And she wanted to be able to paint this picture of the resurrection. And we were just talking back and forth because she was looking for inspiration, looking for words of how to do this. And at a certain point, she's asking me questions. I'm responding from, from the words from the catechism, from words of the fathers, words from our theologians. But she kept asking questions, probing and probing and probing. And at a certain point, I was like, my dear, there are no categories for this. This is what we have. This is the best way we can explain it. But it's much bigger than anything that we can imagine. Now, should this cause for us doubt? No. I would say it should cause us to go deeper in our faith, to open our hearts, our minds, and our wills to God, and to respond in like manner, in the way we act. How should we act? Well, let's look at that gospel once again. What does Jesus do when he finds that fear and doubt are arising in his disciples' hearts? But he leads them through a Bible study. Thus it is written that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. So if we want to grow in our faith to open ourselves up to God and to the other, we can start by opening up our Bibles. And we can look for really good materials. And in our day and age, there are tons of good materials for free online. We subscribe here at St. Mary's Star of the Sea to the Augustine Institute's formed platform, which is free for everyone. All you do is have to log in and register. And there you find much material to be able to grow in your faith. Various Bible studies, various shows, various programs about reconciliation, about the Eucharist, about the Bible. So that you can grow in your faith. So that you can get to know the story. The story about how God created how he sent his son into the world to die and to rise again. How he ascended into heaven and sent the Holy Spirit to renew the face of the earth. And how we are a part of that. We shouldn't be passive with our faith, we should be active with it. Because it's the greatest gift, a treasure that we have received, and we shouldn't take it for granted. Because when everything else ends... Our faith will be there for us. We should invest our time and our energy, our priorities should be there. Another way for us to go deeper in our faith is through our active participation at Holy Mass. St. Luke is so beautiful in the way he structures his gospel, especially in these resurrection accounts. He begins with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They too were walking away from Jerusalem, sad, without hope. Jesus Christ appears to them and he leads them in a Bible study. And their hearts were burning within them. Were not our hearts burning within us as he opened up the, uh, the scriptures to us on the road? He stays with them. And he's made known to them in the breaking of the bread. That's code for Eucharist. Remember, Jesus Christ is not limited now by space-time and the laws of nature. What we receive in the Eucharist to our senses is bread and wine. But it's not bread and wine. It is really, truly, substantially Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity. 
And these two disciples now make it known to the apostles. And with their lack of understanding, Jesus now brings them into a Bible study of their own. And then he leads them into the words, You are witnesses of these things. The Acts of the Apostles shows us that they took this to heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. They are able to proclaim Jesus Christ crucified, Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Repent, turn back to the Lord. The structure of our Mass follows this pattern. The liturgy of the Word leads to the liturgy of the Eucharist, leads to the dismissal, go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. So when Holy Mother Church is obligating us to come to Holy Mass, which entails our practice of the faith, she's not doing it because she wants to hold down some command to us. She desires something of us. She wants us to grow in our faith through word and sacrament. She wants us to be strengthened in that faith so that we can live out that faith in love, in the works of charity, being witnesses of the risen Lord in the world. And in this way, we don't need any other convincing, we become the living proof that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And now we make our way. We go rejoicing to our resurrection because death no longer holds us because of what God has done. We too will have that transformed Humanity, because that's what Christ did for us. And he wants us to share in that life. And so as we read through these scriptures, we are strengthened in our faith so that we can open ourselves up to God and to others, fulfilling the psalm in our life to become a light of the face of Christ in this world.